a gua gua. Guys, we got a new, we got a new. Okay, this is not really a new background. It's our bedroom. We redid the bedroom. And look at the wall. Is the wall not beautiful? Stunning. The wall is stunning. No, come on. It's so cozy. I have been in this room for like the past week because of how cozy it is. I just don't want to leave. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about a video that went viral in China in 2020. 20. Viral is not even the right word. This video was spreading faster than uh, me when my husband gets a new haircut. What? This was spreading faster what? than my booty cheeks on a couch when it's Netflix time. That's supposed to be a very PG joke, but it sounds gross. It's got over 660 million views in less than three weeks. That's how crazy this video went. I mean, it went viral. And this is not some cute little funny video that you'd be proud to share. You'd be like, look at this little dog learning how to bark for the first time. This was somebody's most embarrassing moment of life. Imagine you are seeing Taylor Swift in the shower and someone records it posted in front of 660 million people i would need a full face a reconstructive face transplant surgery just to show my face ever again after that like you know so nobody recognizes my face the video i'm just gonna jump you into it the video starts with a boxing match which you know it really doesn't look like a traditional match not that i know anything about fighting but there is no boxing ring or anything like that it looks like it was organized in a local gym if i'm being for real with you there's maybe a couple dozen spectators so this is not like the i don't know what a championship like boxing name is for like a i don't know it's not one of those where you like win a belt it looks like um middle-aged men at an la fitness and it doesn't make sense because it doesn't seem like this is a professional fight or anything so why would it get 660 million views one of the fighters is a man in his 60s. The other guy that's fighting him looks like he's maybe in his 40s or something, but you get it. It seems like it's gonna be a friendly little match. It seems like they're just having a good time. One of the guys isn't even wearing boxing clothes. Okay, so the younger guy, he's wearing your typical gym bro outfit, gym shorts, tank top. The older guy, he's out here wearing like a full gray set, like the ones that you traditionally see scholars wear. That's what they wear, like when you practice like Chinese Kung Fu. Yeah, like one of those, yes! Yeah. In Great. He looks sharp. He looks very smart, right? Now, he's not wearing any boxing gloves. The younger guy is wearing boxing gloves. So the match starts, and the two guys, they get into position, and immediately... <laughs> immediately you're like this is gonna be a weird video i can just feel it in my bones i don't know anything about fighting so i'm just gonna show you the video the older guy is in the white gray set and the younger guy is in black and this guy has got his fists up in his face he's crouching down the younger guy looks like he's ready to fight ready for blow by blow the older guy genuinely looks like he just woke up i don't know how else to explain it i mean this is genuinely my body language when my husband's trying to tickle me like that is how i'm defending himself he's not even defending himself with his whole ussy okay not a single hand is in front of the old man's face like trying to defend it and then he lunges at the younger man he lunges at the opponent and when he does it's like in slow motion because of how redonka donk it is. He gets immediately punched in the face right between his eyeballs. It doesn't even look like the other younger guy had to try. I mean, I swear, the man's face fell into the punch. I don't think the punch went into his face. I think his face went into the punch, okay? And then there's a second punch. And then the referee is stepping out because this guy is knocked out on the floor. On the floor. I personally would not be getting back up after that like ever i would lay there and i would just keep one eye open and i would make sure everybody leaves the gym for the night so that i can finally get up because how do you get up after that but this man is resurrecting in real time he's back on his feet in seconds which is genuinely impressive after two headshots and the referee is like sir are you okay are you sure you want to continue and the this 60 year old yeah and the 60 year old man is starts shouting good 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 he starts pointing at the opponent saying some shit, like sneak attack sneak attack you, you sneak attack me. <laughs> sneak attack <laughs> the match hasn't even started yet listen he's really crazy for a 60 year old so the referee is like okay let's go round two and this time this guy still does nothing the 60 year old man still does nothing to protect his face if i play you this video no context no sound he looks like he's dancing the clip isn't even sped up <laughs> i'm not laughing at this man because props to him but once you know the full story you'll be laughing at this man okay he's doing his little belly dance like a little belly dance little side to side shimmy shimmy the other guy the young guy in black just walks straight up to him and punches him in the face again and this guy falls over again but he's dead ass made of rubber or something because the moment his back touches the mat 
He springs back up. <laughs> Boom. Back up. He's getting up faster after two consecutive knockouts than I get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> like, it's crazy. And when he gets back up, he looks like nothing just happened. He's walking back to his spot like he's leisurely taking a stroll around the park. And he keeps screaming, good, good, good. <laughs> I'm like, what? But the third round is the most chaotic. Okay, the third round literally took me out. And it also took out the 60-year-old, okay? He's not wasting his time anymore. He's not shaking that ass no more. He goes straight in with a front kick. The old man goes in with a front kick. <sighs> but guys, again, I don't know the first thing about professional fighting, but there's just no way that this is how you do a front kick. He's got his hands out like he's trying to push the other guy away. And then his foot is just like... I don't even think I step on the gas pedal that weekly. <laughs> like, <laughs> like oh there's God. just no way this is real. Oh and God. again, not an inch of protection over his face. He's getting a full throat full of fisting. He gets knocked out a third time. And the way he falls the third time... <laughs> You know those sitcoms where... I didn't know this actually happens in real life. When a person goes stiff uh -huh. and then they fall straight back. That's what happens here? That's how he falls. Oh. And he's just on the floor, immovable object. He's fine, by the way. I mean, I'm sure it left psychological and some physical scars, but he, like, otherwise he's fine. He's not dead. This all happens in 30 seconds. The viral video is three minutes long. So this is a story that's very dear to my heart. <laughs> okay. This Wait, is, you know this video? I know the whole story. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, it's, it's one of the most viral, like... So I, I'll give you some context later. It's... It's okay. crazy. It's hilarious. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this all happens within 30 seconds. So why is the video over three minutes long? Because whoever is recording it is just a fucking menace in society. And they just keep rolling for three minutes straight while this man, 60 year old man, has his hands crossed over his chest, casket style, just on the floor for the next three minutes. He's not getting up. And the worst part is the match is supposed to last four minutes he got uh -huh. ko'd within 30 seconds so who is this guy and why is there over half a billion people memeing the shit out of him before we get into that though i need to talk about a different type of knockout a sweet zesty knockout i'm talking about hello fresh giving away free desserts what a knockout listen i've been talking about hello fresh for years they're my favorite meal kits but this time i'm super excited because they're giving a free dessert with every hello fresh box for the rest of your life. The way wow. I signed up for this so fast because I love dessert, okay? <laughs> I got a new email for that, okay? But not only that, I just love HelloFresh in general. It's not that I don't enjoy cooking. It's just that I don't want to spend half my day in the kitchen planning food, buying ingredients, prepping, cooking, cleaning. It feels like a second job and I would rather use my time spilling China versus tea. So if you guys need a little something sweet with today's tea, you can definitely check out HelloFresh. They deliver pre-portioned farm fresh ingredients straight to your doorstep. You pick which meals look good to you and suit your lifestyle choices and they will send you the ingredients and it's super easy. It's like step-by-step -step recipes. And if you're extra busy, HelloFresh even has a lineup of quick and easy meals, including their 15-minute recipes, which are just perfect when you have no time. They suit everybody's needs with calorie smart and protein smart options. And if you sign up today, every HelloFresh box you receive for the rest of your life will include a decadent dessert of your choice for free. Their chocolate lava cake, you don't even understand how happy I am about this. Their cheesecakes, Oh, go to HelloFresh.com and use code BISSWEET for free dessert for life. One dessert item per box while subscription is active. That's BISSWEET, B-I-S-S-S-W-E-E-T at HelloFresh.com for free dessert for life. Thank you, HelloFresh, for sponsoring today's video. And now, now we got to go all the way back to 2017 and talk about <laughs> Xu Xiaodong. Xu Xiaodong? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly what I said. Also, yeah. he's very active on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> like super active. Oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to call him Shu, right? AKA Beijing Fighting Man. That's what people call him. And he's a little bit controversial. He's an MMA fighter. But like also, is there any MMA fighter that's not controversial? I don't even know. I don't even know what MMA fighting is. And MMA fighters typically, I don't know if this is just in China or in general, they in China typically don't get along with traditional <laughs> martial artists. So there's a little bit of beef between the two communities. And here's why. I don't think 
traditionally. I think it's him. Oh, I think that there's like a little bit. Oh, uh, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. yeah but yeah. like not to a strong degree. It's like, I yeah. think it's like banter. They're like, oh, you did it. But I don't think it's like, I fucking hate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a little bit of beef between the two communities. Traditional martial arts is like an umbrella term for different fighting styles that come from ancient China. That's like a really simple definition, but there's a lot of different types of traditional martial arts, like Tai Chi, for example. And these traditional arts are all about mind body connection, mental. <laughs> and physical health self-defense the point is that it's not just a fighting style there's this whole spiritual component to it you know who's the biggest promoter of tai chi who take a guess mm-hmm. huang su <laughs> no no no, no <laughs> oh, okay no. chinese come on tai chi you know tai chi <laughs> tai chi Chai what Chai is Chai? chinese no no he's very rich jack ma yes what? <laughs> Jack Ma the likes Tai love. Chi? Oh, he has a dying passion for Tai Chi. He even funded a movie about Tai Chi. Like, wow. Because he fucking loved Tai Chi. But you know what? Alibaba is not very Tai Chi friendly. That website? Mm-mm. Why? I don't know. At least the American version? Why is it not Tai Chi friendly? The feng shui is not good. Like some, some websites you like the feng shui, you can browse for hours. Mm-hmm. Alibaba needs better feng shui. You think so? I think so. A thousand percent. He should call me. I can consult him. <laughs> we should do an episode on Jack Ma. Oh, and how he went disappeared for a little bit. Maybe if you guys want um, a whole thing about how one Bruh. of the billionaires disappeared, let me know in the comments. He's back. He's alive. He's well. I don't think he really disappeared, but like it's a whole thing. Anyway, Tai Chi. Traditional martial arts is like the strong, stable parental figure. And <laughs> MMA is the wild child that just went off the rails during college. Probably did a line of cocaine and was like, fuck yeah, bitch. I'm gonna do it better. And I say that with all the respect in the world for both sides because I don't want to be on the ground, okay? But MMA is mixed martial arts and it's all about just like knocking people out. (laughs) That's it. The whole objective is to grab someone by their balls and put them in a chokehold until you've destroyed an entire unborn lineage. MMA fighters will train all different types of martial arts, but at the end of the day, it's It's about about fucking winning. winning. (laughs) But the thing is, a lot of MMA fighters think that MMA is superior to the traditional fighting styles because they're like, we're knocking people out. What are you doing? Just like fucking waving your arms around. You're not even fighting people. We're fighting people. Self-defense my ass. If people come up to me, I can knock them out. What are you going to do? Now, Shu is an MMA fighter and he does have beef stew with traditional martial artists, but not like for the same reason. Shu is not a hater of traditional martial arts. He like really hates fake traditional martial arts masters. He thinks Mm. they're phonies, okay? So he would crack his- The gurus that are like, buy my course for Tai Chi. He would crack his little knuckles, do a little stretch, and then sit down and type out some real nasty, real shit in the comments, okay? I'm kidding. I don't really know what he's typing, but I do know that he has the nickname Master Buster, (laughs) which like kind of sounds a little sexual (laughs) because of how many fake gurus he called out in the traditional martial arts world. It's literally Chinese myth busters, except the whole production team is just Xu and his fists. (laughs) I feel like he'd be typing and one finger clicks like two keys at once. (laughs) Like, I just imagine he's got, like, really big fingers. He's just, like, chomping away. But he gets the job done, okay? Here's the process. She was going to sniff out someone he thinks is a little too cocky, selling a little course on Tai Chi, I see, challenge them to a match, and then or, knock or, them out. Or sometimes it's not even selling courses. They have they have memberships, so you join, oh, yes. like, their little... How like, club, it? organization. It's more than that. It's, like, a whole it's, branch oh. of Tai Chi. Yeah, they got, like, a whole branch. It's, like, a whole lifestyle so netizens are kind of eating this up and they think shu is so real for that but then in 2017 shu name drops this guy lele okay lele's claiming he's a tai chi master tai chi if you don't know is a chinese martial arts typically practiced for self-defense of recreational purposes recreational meaning like you're not going to get mobbed on the street and you're not going to like whip out that Tai Chi. I do think it helps with other fighting styles. I think it helps with a lot because it's all about like stamina. It's about overcoming your mental headspace as well as like learning core balance and stuff. But it's not the most combative sport, right? You know, like, Does that make in, sense? In Asia, the, in, in China, the parks, yeah. like the grandpas are moving. That's <laughs> all. They're all practicing Tai Chi. Yeah, like they're not going to knock you out in the alleyway with that. Yeah. Unless they're practicing other things in cohesion like in unison but Shu takes one good whiff at Lele and he's like 
I smell the counterfeit from this guy. So she was like, let's take it to the ring and see if your Tai Chi is better than my MMA. Now, keep in mind, Lele is not some random ass self-proclaimed internet master. That is Shu's typical victim profile. But now, now Shu's stepping up his game. Lele has national official recognition. He was on TV at one point on China Central Television, non-ironically called CCTV, where he was just showing (laughs) off his Tai Chi skills on a program called experience real kung fu so what i'm saying is like no shade to anyone on the internet you know what i mean look at me did anyone ask you do you know kung fu growing up or no (laughs) yes really even you (laughs) and then i have to be like actually i know taekwondo (laughs) but to get to national tv you have to be pretty fucking legit especially cctv that's crazy, okay? <laughs> That's really crazy. Like, you really got to do something to get on CCTV. <laughs> so it's April 2017, and this is a highly anticipated event in China. Tai Chi master versus MMA fighter. Can you guess how long the match lasted? For the record, this is not the match from the intro. That one happened in 2020. This is in 2017. Mm. I don't know, 20 seconds? Yeah, 20 seconds. Okay, which (laughs) some men might try to argue is a considerable length of time, but let's be real people, okay? The only time 20 seconds is a long time is when you're holding your breath. That's about it. So if they're gonna only last 20 seconds, they better at least choke you. Or something, you know? I don't know. The video lasts 20 seconds because all that happened was Lele getting bounced around like a helium balloon. And 10 of those 20 seconds was Lele literally being used as a human whack-a-mole, just getting bonked nonstop. And to be fair, to be fair, I want to be fair, okay? Shu does MMA, which is a combat sport, and Tai Chi is more like self-defense. How come I wasn't seeing any self-defense, okay? No defense, no sense of self, not even spatial awareness. And again, I just want to make it very clear. I love the Tai Chi community. I think they are some of the coolest people with the most mind-body connection I've seen. And to really master Tai Chi, one must master themselves, Thank which you. is the hardest mastery you can do. Thank to master you. thyself, that's yes. a lot of mental, spiritual work, right? Say it louder but it's kind of my grandpa. <laughs> but it's kind of like if you were to take an ice sculptor and then put them on the slopes with Eileen Goo. I mean, it's not going to be good for anyone but Eileen. You know what I mean? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what are you on? So Shu knocks Lele out in less than 20 seconds. And this sent me, okay, this this probably sent Lele to the hospital, but this sent me, this sent China into a feeding frenzy. Lele has the internet survival instincts of a second generation YouTuber because he can't even, he can't even warm up before running his mouth. He's doing interviews after all of this. He's talking about how he lost because he was holding back, how he was showing mercy. He said, and I'm paraphrasing here, but if I had used all my internal energy, <sighs> Shu would have suffered severe internal injuries, <laughs> if not died. <laughs> he's saying this with a straight face just yapping okay he's a thousand percent fucking serious this is me <laughs> in fifth grade <laughs> yes. if i try, try a little harder <laughs> you will not see the sun tomorrow <laughs> yeah and he's trying to put his money where his mouth is but no one's co-signing his loan yeah finally lele finds an opponent and this is honestly really sad it's sad because um Lele is like, I'm going to redeem myself. I'm going to fight another person. And it seems like Lele maybe purposely chose this guy. His name is Wang. And we don't know much about him other than that he practiced martial arts. And he was just like a big bearded guy. We do know that he was way less experienced in martial arts than Lele. So the vibe is almost he chose Wang thinking he could beat someone with less experience. Right. That's what the netizens are theorizing. So So Lele did not hold back this time. Okay, he's edging for a total of three rounds. Not bad. Not bad. You know, Lele takes a total of 127 punches. (laughs) Wait. He's taking them on impact. 127 oh. punches. Dang. And by the end of the match, he was apparently crying and reciting poetry. <laughs> <laughs> and I would feel bad. I would feel bad for this bald middle-aged man crying, okay? Oh. Except he literally did this to himself, did he not? So hello. Hello to the consequences of your own choices, sir. So, okay. There are these branches of Kung Fu styles yeah. in China. And he supposedly represent a whole branch of Kung Fu style. Oh, so his name and his whole 
lineage, his students, his whole masters and reputation, everything's on the line. So he must defend the name. Otherwise, he loses this whole name. So did they disown him afterwards? Were they like, okay, bye? No, he's like the leader. I know, but can they disown him afterwards? No, he's... <laughs> He's the one that's like Damn. in charge. Okay. Like imagine the headmaster of the school. Damn. Yeah. So Wang becomes so popular after this match that he breaks into the entertainment industry. The oh. other guy, the other weak guy that he chose. And I guess people were so entertained by the way that he violated Lele and they wanted to see him in movies. Wang even has a biography where he described defeating Tai Chi master Lele as his most significant achievement. And this is what Lele has to say about that. Also, his facial expression is sending me. But Lele said in the interview, he still hasn't realized that I was letting him win. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since, Lele's been challenging amateur boxers to try and redeem himself. Legend says if you go to the local gym and you brush past a punching bag, you will receive a DM from Lele to fight. <laughs> <laughs> he actually got a few more people to fight him, I think. And he got knocked out every oh single God. time. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah, like maybe the real friends are the knockouts we take along the way, you know? Like he's a real <laughs> one. He's doing this to make them look better at <laughs> his expense. So you would think with the amount of clowning this man has been doing that he would be a professional internet clown by now. This is... um. This actually is not the guy from the intro to this video. Oh no, not even close. There is a whole world of MMA fighters fighting traditional martial arts people, <laughs> gurus. Lele can't even be the best at being the worst because there's Ma Bao Gua. Ma Bao Gua. Ma Bao Gua. <laughs> Ma Bao Gua. Should we call him Ma or Bao? Ma Dong Mei. <laughs> Ma Dong Mei. I'll call him Bao. Like Shalom Bao. Yeah, Shalom Bao. He do be a little Shalom Bao. Okay, so basically after Shu, the master buster publicly crucified Lele's reputation. Shu was actually getting a lot of hate from the other traditional martial artists. They were saying that Shu disrespected the art and a lot of them felt this sense of injustice that this is how their art was being portrayed to the rest of the nation. Okay, so a little background on Shu. I, from my recollection is he runs like an MMA gym in China. And then he's also like an internet personality. He talks mm. a lot of smack on social media. Smack. <laughs> yeah, no, he really does. He basically just talking smacks. Um, and so he's calling out these like traditional martial art people. Mm. And he's like, no, I'm just saying like, come on. If they claim they are the real deal, like then come, let's go. Go into the ring. Let's fight. You know, so he's like yeah. an entertaining personality. So he started fighting all these people. In the process, he's like talking a lot of smack. Yeah. And some people were mad at him. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Because traditional Kung Fu also linked to history and Asian all of that. China, yeah. yeah. Now it's like you're comparing that to MMA, which is like foreign, much more like you know, Western. But also kind of like more violent. Yeah. Some people were saying like, you know, traditional martial arts is not about violence for the sake of violence. Yeah, it's, yeah, you yeah. Know. So, I mean, that's yeah. the whole reason why like it became such a big topic. Mm. Which like for the record, I don't know if she ever slandered traditional martial arts itself. But regardless, his showdown with Lele definitely did not make things better for traditional martial arts. It didn't make it look good. And that's on Lele. But you get it. So Bao was another traditional martial arts master who is publicly coming for Shu. And he's really intense about it. He made it his part-time job to write about MMA fighter Shu on Weibo. Like he wrote this long rambly post that's apparently been deleted. But Chinese legend has it that the post was 4,000 words words long <laughs> 4,000 words that's like two full-length smuts okay let me think of something a little bit more appropriate 4,000 if you put that into years a word for every year it would almost be as old as the Chinese civilization itself like that's crazy 4,000 words on someone you've never met that's insane and Chinese words are much more like shortened Jam-packed. Jam-packed. Jam Each character has like a lot more meaning. It's yeah. not like one letter. You know, yeah, it's not yeah. like all the, it's a lot. Okay. Anyway, and in his post, Bao allegedly criticized Xu for being very arrogant. He wrote that Tai Chi is a national art that should not be violated and yeah. anyone who violates it should be punished to the letter of the law. And then he allegedly challenged Xu 
to fight him, which sounds, you know, it sounds all noble and brave, but y'all are not getting just how brave this is. Okay, Bao is in his 60s. Bao is in his 60s. This is very brave. Let that sink in, people. His knees were manufactured in 1950s. That's when they were created. His elbow joints are older than video cassette tapes. Like, that's fucking gnarly. He's been around longer than Star Wars has been around. We don't know exactly how old she is, but imagine your I, I imagine 30s. Yeah. Like your grandpa is writing an angry Twitter post about how he wants to fight your neighbor's dad. And then this is your neighbor's dad. I personally, no, I would never let it slide. I'd be like, Grandpa, it's time to chill out. Let's get you some oatmeal. Let's go back to your rocking chair. Let's put on your favorite little program you want to watch like a Korean mystery show. Chinese netizens, however, are fucking unreal because they are mass posting fight, fight, fight. Like they want to egg this on. And Shu was surprisingly down to fight the geriatric league. Like calm your tits, bro. It's been like two months since you took out Lele. But he's like, let me freaking fight bow next. The devil works hard, but I feel like even the devil wouldn't fight a six-year-old. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So the Beijing fighting man, AKA Shu, flies to Shanghai to challenge Bao. This is not like an official match or anything that's being held by an MMA fight club or any of that sort, but people are just sharing it on Weibo. If there were headlines, I imagine it would be something along the lines of MMA fighter versus senior Tai Chi master. Who could possibly win? Okay. (laughs) Who? People just want to see someone get knocked out again. Okay. So like I said, this is not an official match. So can you guess what venue they choose? I know you're going to think like a logical answer, like maybe a local gym, or maybe a local boxing gym, perhaps. And that would be a very reasonable response, except we are in the Chinaverse where logic is a different concept. They decide we're going to have a match at a swimming pool. I'm dead ass. Hand on my heart. No bullshit. No diarrhea. They're going to do this match at a swimming pool, specifically the Shanghai Pudong swimming pool. I don't know. Maybe the idea was that the chlorine in the air just lubricates Bao's joints or something through his nostrils. Like in my head, I was thinking that sounds very dangerous. Everybody knows that moist towels and old people, they don't get along. Like that's why they have the bars at the senior homes in the shower. Moist what? Moist tiles on the floor. Moist tile. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, both. (laughs) Okay. But I was like really thinking... Maybe it's kind of smart. Maybe they're fighting at the edge of the pool. So if he gets knocked out, he doesn't hit the ground. He hits the water, which I think is less impact, right? (laughs) Or they're just wearing bikinis and (laughs) water fighting. But then like, what if he slips on the moist towels? That's crazy. Anyway, the time... Moist towels? Like... Oh, tiles! (laughs) Why do you keep saying that? What are you thinking about? Anyway, it's June 2017. So maybe... This is how they want to open up the pool season. Anyway, 200 people show up to watch this fight, which is a lot of people. Now, remember, this is nothing official. There's even some camera crew here for receipts, but nothing official. Maybe there's like a few confused families with pool noodles in the pool. But overall, everybody's buzzing. They're ready for this. Half an hour before the match is supposed to start, Bao shows up and he makes a whole fight entrance he's here with his wife he's got half a dozen disciples you can't make this shit up there's a half a dozen guys behind bow and two of them are hauling this it's like two sticks they're holding these giant two sticks and it's a red banner and they're just like flying the banner <laughs> and it reads hanyang xingyao tai chi school I believe these are Bao students or something, like martial arts students. That's the school name. Yeah, that's the school flag. But we don't, there's no way to confirm a thousand percent because Bao is like, I decline to comment. (laughs) There are reporters and he's like, I decline to comment. No comment, no comment. (laughs) The interviewer tries to get a statement and he's like, no, no interviews, please. Make way for my disciples. Please, no interviews, no interviews. At one point, he does start speaking English out of nowhere. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah I forgot He speaks English <laughs> yeah. At one point he like just starts busting out the English vocabulary <laughs> uh, Hello everyone I'm a super mind Tai Chi master Ma Bao Guo And now just in case y'all forgot This is happening at a pool And if you're wondering Are they seriously gonna fight at a pool 
Um, no. Thankfully, somebody developed some common sense within like the past 20 minutes and they're like, maybe we shouldn't have a senior citizen in this natural predator at a pool. The wet tiles are going to make them go slip slip and his brain going to go dead dead. Okay. So just to be clear, the people developing this common sense out of nowhere is not Bao, nor is it Shu. They're fucking ready. They're signing pre-fight documentation. Basically, DNRs do not resuscitate. Okay. Okay, like it's crazy. Just before the fight is about to start, the pool building administrator runs out and order stop, 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 stop. First, he said, I don't think that this is a suitable venue. I don't think so. Which is probably obvious even to that five-year-old in the corner that's like holding a pool noodle. Anyway, the administrator is like, but that's not the important reason. Okay. F brain injuries. I don't care about that. The important reason is. I did not get a formal official form that you filled out for this venue booking. You can't just like show up at the pool with 200 people and spectators and camera crew. Like I need to be compensated for my venue being used for these television purposes or whatever you're doing here. Like you're filming and you can't be filming unless you sign these waivers and stuff. So he's like, you got to get out of here. Shu comes out with the most diabolical statement I've ever heard. He's like, paraphrasing basically but he said well if we can't have a match here we can just tell the media to leave and we'll just fight in private <laughs> street fight <laughs> yeah this 30 year old man calm your tits like you need to slow down on the testosterone that's just like buzzing through your system because like he is out for blood he is a shark itching to see some chlorine water streaked with senior citizen red he did not fly all the way to shanghai to come back with blue balls but at this point bao 60 year old old man is starting to develop a survival instinct. <laughs> when an interviewer asked him if he wanted to find another venue and go fight, and he said, yes, yes. But witnesses said the yes, yes was not very passionate. <laughs> it was very uh, mm, flimsy. <laughs> so the fight never happens, but the show is not over because Bao is breaking his silence. Remember how he was saying, no interview, no interview, no interview, right? No comment, no comment. He does not claim that statement anymore. It is his time to shine. So apparently Bao has a book like an autobiography it's called teaching kung fu in england it's a really random title okay one of the reporters at the scene the local swimming pool stays up until 2 a.m the previous night reading bao's book and he's intrigued so he reaches out to bao later after the match doesn't go through and he's like "Ooh, let me talk about this book and this just opens the floodgates bao goes into his whole life story he's retelling the entire second half of the 20th century it's historical it's very <laughs> historical but the real story starts in 1996 when he said, my son was about to go to college, <laughs> which is crazy, okay? But the family is in a dire financial situation. It's really bad. He said they couldn't even afford food. No food. Tuition was about, I don't know, like $15,000, which doesn't sound like a lot compared to American private schools because our school system is just forked, okay? But to the average Chinese household, that's a lot of money. And to everybody, that's a lot of money, right? But Bao said that he had no choice but to borrow the money, move to England to teach Kung Fu. So the idea is like, there's not a lot of Kung Fu teachers in England. So he's going to make a lot of money. That's like when you speak English in America. Okay. And what? But then if you go to like Korea to teach English, it's like, oh, okay. I guess you're cooler now. Right. It's like <laughs> suddenly you have a skill, right? That's not so basic. So he's like, I'm go to England and I'm going to teach Kung Fu. I don't know what he was studying. The son was studying, but he went to England to study. That's why he moved. But regardless, regardless, Bao moves to England for five years. And that is why he was speaking. Like, he really wants people to know that he knows English. That's why he <laughs> keeps speaking English and he keeps bringing up England. It's in the title of his book. Like, fucking England is everywhere. So please, don't you forget it. Leave it in the comments. Shout out to England. Across the pond. Hello. I think I'm losing it. <laughs> to demonstrate that he is a Kung Fu master and he's very serious, even though he didn't go through with the match with Shu, he pulls out his flesh ball. And no, he's not pulling out his testes, you nasty. Like, what is wrong with you? It's just a ball that's flesh colored. About the size of golf balls, maybe. Smaller than tennis balls, but larger than human. Well, I guess it depends on the specimen, right? And he's showing this flesh colored ball, right? It's attached to his hand. <laughs> There's a ball in the middle of his palm. A ball. A, a, a meatball. A meatball in the middle of his palm. He just has a flesh-colored ball. And he's just showing it to prove that he's a kung fu master. And I, I did go on Reddit threads and stuff. And I was trying to figure out what's going on. Like, what, what is it? Um, it's like a, I think it's a benign tumor. 
<laughs> right? But he said it's because he is mastered. You're gonna fucking die, Zhu Xiaojiang. Zhu Xiaojiang. Zhu Xiaojiang. Oh, he says Zhu Xiaojiang. It's Zhu Xiaojiang. Are you sure? Yes. So the woman, this woman apparently was like, "Bao, I don't believe that you're a master at Zhu Xiaojiang." Which, if you don't know Zhu Xiaojiang, it's an urban legend. No. It's not an urban legend. I am the reincarnation of Zhu Xiaojiang because my hands are very red. So basically, there is a character in Chinese folklore. Not it's character. A, no, no, oh. no, 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 no. It's a type of kung fu. Oh, it's a type of it's kung a fu. It's a branch. It's a branch of it's, kung fu yes. where you get a flaming bowl of sand that's lit on Don't fire. Don't do that at home. It's like twenty thousand degrees, okay? And you just keep chopping your hands in there, okay? Sand, sand, sand. And hot then, sand, hot sand. And then your hands become my hands, right? After years of practicing, yes. your hands are like iron hard and red. And then it's like one smack at someone, they are injured from the inside. Internal bleed, guys. It's so bad that sometimes I will play. I'm flirting. I'm laying in bed, and I'm like, oh my god, honey, stop! And I just like, I tap him, and he goes. Calm down with your Zhu Xiaojiang. Calm down, calm down. I will die in exactly <laughs> 10 years and three days. It's very precise. I just want you to know I have mastered it. But so has Bao. He said that this woman comes up to him and is like, let me see your flesh balls. Okay, I don't think that you really mastered Zhu Xiaojiang. And then he's like, let me tell you, okay? He pinches her. He pinches her. Years later, years later, she has five dark spots where he pinched her. Still there. <laughs> Okay, and Bao is confidently telling this to the reporters. At one point in the interview, they ask Bao, "Did you see the MMA fighters fight with the other guy, Lele, like the one that got beat up before you?"、Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Yeah, I watched the fight, and I thought, you know, the other traditional guy, the other guru, Lele, he lacked practical combat skills, and he just had the wrong attitude, you know." And、uh, this is me paraphrasing. He said, "Me, on the other hand, I can break a naked choke with a single hand, and I can sing while doing it." I can break a naked choke. Yeah. What's a naked choke? You don't want to know. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a it's above. You haven't passed Zhu Xiaojiang yet. You wouldn't understand. Okay. So Bao is not asked to demonstrate, but he keeps insisting to the reporters, "Hit me, hit me anywhere." <laughs> like he's not even saying it. Like you can hit me anywhere and I'll be fine. He's demanding. You fucking put that mic down and you beat the. Fuck Gotta be right now! <laughs> like he's demanding. Like apparently, this sixty-year-old somehow actually manages to peer pressure reporters to smack him, and he gets two strong-looking dudes to bend his fingers, like bend him, bend him backwards, and he's just like, "Yeah, good. That's how strong I." Guys, keep this man away from your grandmas. Okay, <laughs> lock your grandmas up. If I was the MMA fighter, I don't even know what I would do. I'd be like, this man is scary, not because I think he's talented, but because I think he is so absolutely unhinged. I have no idea where this is gonna go. So the MMA fighter is like, no, I'm gonna keep up with this clownery. I'm gonna fight this guy. So okay, they they try to do a first fight. Yeah. So they they are talking smack to each other、yeah. online, trying to do a fight. The fight didn't happen for some reason because the、cool. venue wasn't allowing this.、Mm -hmm. And then they go back to talking smack about each other online. And then they're gonna make a new fight.、Yes. They rescheduled the new fight, and they find another venue, something safe and dry, like what your ex does for you, you know. But Bao, he's got some beef with the venue. He said he specifically requested a wooden floor. We do not know the chemical composition of the venue floor. It could have been wet tiles. It could have been. Laminate flooring. We don't know, but that wasn't the only problem. Ten minutes before the match was supposed to start, the MMA fighter Shu gets dragged away by cops. Yeah, this was a huge deal. Like they're all warming up and shit, and then police just showed up out of nowhere and he, took him away. He gets questioned for like five hours. Why? We don't know. Okay, but it's alleged that a person named Ma Bing called the police for what? We don't know harassment of the elderly. Allegedly, the person who called the cop name is Ma Bing, and Bao's full name is Ma Bao Guo. They have the same last name. So no speculations, no conclusions. Okay, just a fact. But Bao was actually interviewed about the situation, and reporters asked him straight up, "Don't you have a nephew? Did your nephew call the cops on Shu, the MMA fighter?" And Bao said, "I don't have a nephew called Ma Bing, so it couldn't have been him." <laughs> <laughs> and then he added that he only intended for a friendly sparring session with Shu, the MMA fighter, and he had no intention of injuring him. <laughs> and then he said that there was one time he sparred with an English MMA fighter in England who couldn't even stand against one of his fingers. Xiao Zhang, what is it? Zhu Xiaojiang. Zhu Xiaojiang. 
All right, let me explain the meatball on his hand. The full story yes. is that he keeps trying to tell people yeah. that meatball is actually, you know, Chinese says qi, right? Yes. Energy, also gas. Yeah. Qi is gas, yeah. right? So your body gets gassy sometimes. <laughs> so it's his farts on his <laughs> No, listen to me. Chinese Kung Fu, allegedly, in the books, you know, you, you move these energy around your body. Mm -hmm. You guide the energy around. It helps with the blood flow and all of that. Basically, he has too much of gas. Mm, <laughs> excess gas. So he uses this meatball as like a little <laughs> pressure uh, releaser. So it's like more gas will get released on here or get trapped in here. It controls the pressure, gas pressure in his body. Like a little pressure cooker. Rice cooker, pressure cooker, you know what I mean? That's, I know what that, you mean. That's a meatball that goes... I just want you to know, I think that you know way too much about this. Oh, I I'm, I was so invested. Like the I, way that you're passionately telling this story. I think you have more passion than when you tell people like how we met. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he's like... MMA can't even go up against one of my fingers, which I don't know what that has anything to do with the police questioning the MMA fighter, but like someone get this grandpa his meds. And then grandpa pulls out another flesh ball, okay? So at the end of the interview, the reporter asks Bao if he's willing to fight Shu, the MMA fighter, again. You know, third time's the charm, right? Because it didn't work the first two times. And Bao said, well, he's got three to five more years until I turn 70. I don't know what that means like the three to five years like the guesstimate or the fact that Bao is like I draw the line at 70 I don't know what's going on but Bao and Shu would never have another pool date in fact China never saw Shu again for a while the MMA fighter was taken into police questioning and he was banned from the internet for a hot minute I don't know if he's still banned he's on YouTube but yeah. I don't know if he's banned on Chinese social media like we really have no idea why but there are two main theories one theory is that the police arrested him for provoking trouble fighting and brawling and encouraging violence which is against public security management regulations and another theory is that Xu actually pissed off the fact that um, he was really putting down traditional martial arts and that is considered a historical practice in china and not just like this new hee hee ha, ha thing it's like a it's like history it's rich in history and he was making a mockery out of it either way the guy gets canceled okay by the ccp not by me or anything okay but the ccp which seems like it would be good news for bao the old man because he can walk away he can walk away and be like you know what i could have fucking taken that guy but i'm gonna be nice i'm gonna be nice to the world you know what they say, though? After you clap one cheek, the other cheek got to get clapped, okay? So here we go. The other cheek's about to get clapped. Remember that English MMA fighter that Bao mentioned oh, in his interview? This is good. This People is good. dug up the video of Bao sparring this guy. And this video just spawned into the fiery depths of Chinese internet, okay? How? Because Bao himself posted it back in 2015. And before I play you the video, I just need to preface, okay, <laughs> that this man Bao this is the same man that claims he can throw 11 punches per second and send his opponent flying oh with the touch of a fingertip. Have you seen his 11 punches per second video? Oh my God, it's so good. You got to play that video. Oh, really? So he, that's his, his party trick. <laughs> he said, this is my 11. He said, how many people can pun throw 11 punches in one second? Ask okay. yourself. Now try it. Try it. 11 punches? 11 punches. Okay, can you count Ready, for me? set, go. <laughs> one, two, three, go. <laughs> that was at least 43. One, it's not one second. <laughs> okay, ready? Just count to one. Okay. One Mississippi. Okay. One Mississippi. This is like 32. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's his party trick. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That, that he still he still teaches that. He teaches that? Yeah, <laughs> Can he teaches you try? Bruh, it's very advanced. <laughs> he was on TV and performing it. Like, Damn. Okay, so. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to go up against the MMA fighter. And with like peace and love, maybe not the 11 punches per second, but everything else, I feel like I'm watching on 0.5 speed. Do you guys ever dream that you're running, but in the dream, your whole body is really heavy and you're moving in slow motion? That's how this man is moving in the middle of the fight with the MMA fighter. 
This opponent who is half naked, oiled up and ripped to coconut shreds. Bao is moving like he's on a leisurely Sunday stroll around the farmer's market. He's throwing punches like he's fucking stretching. But somehow Bao manages to grab this MMA fighter's tree trunk of a leg and knock him off balance in slow motion. And this MMA guy gets knocked off his feet by a 60 year old man in the most cinematic, dramatic way. They're fighting in like a warehouse. I mean, it's like it's like he's a paid actor. <laughs> Because he fucking is. <laughs> He's a fucking paid actor. Okay, I know you're like, what the fork is going on right now? I'm going to play you the beginning of this video because everything is going to make a lot of sense. The only thing I don't get is who authorized this, but I digress. The whole video is fake. And at first I thought it was like a commercial or something like a promo for Bao's Kung Fu class or something, but it's not that simple. Okay, it would not be that simple. So let's peel back this story. Bao taught Kung Fu for five years in England in the early 2000s. During that time, one of his students, rich man named John, falls in love with it. Bao goes back to China and a decade goes by and John is like, you know what? I've become loaded. I'm an entrepreneur and I've made it. I'm a CEO now. And I want to give back to the people who instilled in me what I needed to become this successful. Let me fly the Kung Fu master Bao back to England and make this beautiful tribute to him. It's not like a TV commercial. It's not supposed to be used for promo. It's just a video tribute of love. So John calls up a retired MMA fighter. Okay. Peter Irving. And uh, for the record, he's actually a pretty good fighter. I believe he's had 15 wins, nine draws, and like only one loss in his professional career. The so, only like, loss to Ma Bao Guo. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like really good, okay? He's not like the cream of the crop, but like, yeah, he's good. And then he retired to become a coach. Now, Peter, he just wants to live a quiet life. But then one day he gets a call from John, his good old buddy. And John's like, hey, I have this, you know kung fu master that used to teach me 10 years ago anyway long story short i would love if you could just be in his video and just like let him knock you out <laughs> and like it'll be like a cute little tribute video and it's like i don't know i think peter got paid because it's a lot and now two years later peter's name is getting dragged on chinese internet forums because they're like how did peter get knocked down he's crazy so the video goes public. Peter never knew it was even going to get public. He realizes now, two years later, that Bao has been using it to show off his fighting skills and promote his own business. Peter breaks his silence. He tweets, well, this is a bit embarrassing and I'm not sure quite how to respond. I did an acting job a year or so ago as like the fighter in the vanity project for this old kung fu guy, Ma, which I understood to just be a tribute to him that wasn't a general release anyway. Yeah, he also put like a bunch of skull emojis in that statement. So <laughs> here we are. Peter went on to say that he's really sad about the whole situation because he really liked Bao. And now, now it's just getting weird. He doesn't know what's going on, but it's just getting weird. And Peter's not here for it. You know, he's like, let me just leave in peace. I was paid to be knocked down. I don't know how you can't see it from the video. <laughs> Peter also did briefly mention that the meatball made an appearance, guest appearance when he was hanging out with Bao. He said uh, Bao wouldn't shut up about the meatball and kept swinging it in Peter's <laughs> face, literally teabagging him with a slightly less inappropriate body part. And at the end of the statement, Peter is like, um... Yeah, I just want to like get over it. But like if someone wants to pay for me to fly to China, I'd be more than happy to go for a little meatball to meatball fight sesh <laughs> with Bao. OK, Bao did not respond to the meatball booty call. He ghosted the Internet for like the next two years. So Bao is busy just like running his little thing, right? Because he's got a lot of quote unquote disciples that follow him. They don't think that he's weird. They think that he's the master of Tai Chi. And there was this one guy who trained under Bao for like five years and said not only did he get stronger, but his vision got better, like his eyesight got better. <sighs> Another student would open his own branch of Bao's martial arts school after Bao left England. Like this is like long time ago, right? Basically branching out Bao's studies and they're all just, it's like international at this point. It's a lot. He charges like $80 per lesson. So like bottom line, Bao is doing great. He's doing fantastic. So he doesn't need to be on TV embarrassing himself nonstop. He went from struggling to buy carrots when his son was in college to being like a Wagyu feast kid king like he's killing it i think to join his school you have to pay like a thousand dollars a month what which is a lot of money 
It's crazy. He also charges like $140 an hour if you want to train with him personally. So like the man knows his worth. But because this is the Chinaverse, this is not how the story ends. It's never that easy. So to recap, Shu and Bao. Bao actually instigates Shu and is like, I want to fight you, Shu, the MMA fighter. They try to fight three different times. It doesn't work. The MMA fighter, Shu, gets banned from the Chinese internet. Bao has this whole thing with his old video from 2015 coming up where he was beating up Peter Irving, but like not really because because he was a paid actor. Peter Irving makes his own statement. It's like a whole sh- show. And then Bao disappears from the internet for like two years. But, but he's never just going to stay silent, okay? Because running his mouth is what got his ass to the kiddie pool in the first place. So in early 2020, Bao graces the internet again with his absolute shenanigans. And this time, he's completely off the rocker. March 2020, Huge month for Chinese MMA. There was a Chinese female fighter who won the UFC World Championship oh my God. in her weight category. <gasps> yes. Yes. Now, I'm not a boxer. I'm not a fighter. I've never claimed to be a fighter, so I have no forking clue what that means. But basically, she's one of the best MMA fighters in the world. That's what that means. And Bao has a lot to say about that. This happens in a series of Weibo posts, and this is his opening statement. When I fought the European MMA fighter, Peter Irving, he couldn't even get close to me. Okay, sir, this is like out of nowhere. Why is he just dragging Peter into this again? Like, what is the reason? Leave our man Peter alone. I don't know if he's our man. I don't know if Peter's controversial. Please, I'm sorry. Then he drags the boxer, Whaley, yeah, into Wei this. Li, yeah, yeah Whaley into this. And like, it's crazy. He says, her method of fighting is too stupid because she hasn't learned traditional martial arts. She also gets hit when attacking her opponent. Whaley's coach is too far behind. Of course, Whaley dares. Whaley has brought glory to our country, which is great. But I feel sorry for her when I see her moves. Haters, please be reasonable. The truth will prevail everywhere. After you dissect the video of me fighting Peter Irving, the England MMA fighter, then you can criticize me. Please understand the efforts of this 70-year-old man. Me. Don't use foolish methods to confront me. Okay, first of all, we need to free our man Peter Irving. The man cannot retire in peace. But seriously, Bao is off his meds in March 2020 because he still keeps posting. I can spar with Whaley. Only one condition, wear shoes, fight for only two minutes, and fight on a hard floor. Get in touch with me, Whaley. I'll stop whenever I want. I'm not going to hurt her, everyone. I get it. She's like a national treasure. At this point, Chinese netizens are still amused, but they're also kind of getting pissed off. Like, no one is stepping forward to get their grandpa, so the Chinese netizens have have to take him out himself, you know? People start posting, then do it, grandpa. Show us your moves, okay? Like, get it over with. Like, we can't keep doing this every two years. Like, you can't just fucking disappear every two years and then come back, like, trying to fight somebody. At this point, let's do it. Let's get it over with. So at this point, not even the ghost of Peter Irving's past can resurrect Bao's pride. He's in so deep. He's he's either going to knock someone out or he's going to knock someone up. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what else he could redeem himself with, okay? So the internet peer pressures bow into putting some actual punches behind his smack talk the same month media outlets announce online that bow is going to participate in a competition called jianghu 16 which is like a relatively small local competition but overnight this local competition became national news people were riled up because the internet never forgot about bow's unfinished match with the mma fighter shu the master buster shu So they're like, now is the time. He's going to fight someone. We don't even know who. It's not even going to be an MMA fighter. It's just like a national competition, like a local competition. Wait, Bao is going on to this fight? Yeah, to this like little local competition where anyone can really join. And it's like a mix of there's some amateur MMA fighters. There's some amateur traditional martial arts fighters. It's just like a hodgepodge mix of people. yeah. Yeah. So in April, he posts a very long Weibo post confirming that he is in fact going to attend this like competition it's a whole thing is this the beginning video yeah Ah! yeah so this competition is divided into age groups bao gets placed into the 67 to 72 category (sighs) but the problem is he's the only one in that category (laughs) (laughs) so the event organizers are struggling to find him an opponent like they can't just go outside and say hey old man do you want to try getting knocked out for a second it'll be fun (sighs) 
right? So um, let me tell you, if I was 70, the last fucking thing on my bucket list would be belly dancing with Bao on a pool tile and like doing some shenanigans, okay? So finding an opponent, very difficult. And I imagine they can't just tell him, hey, you can't compete. So instead they asked him thinking he would say no. Hey, are you cool with fighting someone that's like 20 years younger than you and like twice your weight? And he's like, absolutely. I am a Tai Chi master. So on May 16th, a day before the match, he posts on Weibo. I want to restore the reputation of traditional Kung Fu. And then he like tags a bunch of celebrities. I don't know. Clown? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a whole thing. And um, the next post on his Weibo is a video of him. Arms crossed across his chest, knocked out on the floor. Ah! And it's his PR team, and they write, Mr. Ma is doing fine. Thank you for the worries. <laughs> <laughs> and you would think from that video, the one from the intro, that Bao's opponent is some testosterone ridden podcast bro who can't wait to use a 70 year old as a punching bag. But like he actually was as gobsmacked as the rest of us. Like if you see that video, there's screenshots of that video. The whole fight he looks confused. Like he, he punches him and then he gets knocked out and he looks fucking confused. <laughs> And then the ref is like round two and he looks really confused. And then Bao keeps coming up trying to fight him. So he punches him again and then he knocks out. <laughs> and he looks, he looks like he's questioning the whole time. Who am I? Where am I? Where is the Kung Fu master? Like, does that look like the face of someone who just wants to knock out a 70 year old? No, he looks fucking confused. So Bao's opponent was a guy named Wong. And he's a lot younger and a lot bigger than Bao. He's about 49. But to be fair, Wong's not even a fighter. Like, he's not a combat athlete. He actually practices traditional martial arts. But I mean, it's still a bit more like a combat fighting one than Tai Chi, but it's way less aggressive than MMA. So he's just like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> he did some a interviews afterwards and he said, well, I think I only won because of <laughs> Bao's advanced age and fatigue from traveling. <laughs> he's like, I think he was fatigued <laughs> from traveling. Now Bao, he does some interviews too afterwards and he's got his own reasons why he didn't win. It's not fatigue. He said that was a sneak attack. <laughs> <laughs> sneak attack. That was a sneak attack. I was ambushed. <laughs> it actually prevented me from using my full strength. Sneak attack. This sneak attack <laughs> became a fucking meme. <laughs> yes. Everyone, yes, yes. everyone everywhere was like, a sneak attack. Don't sneak attack me. Don't sneak attack me. Women were like uh, announcing their pregnancies. It was a sneak attack. <laughs> My husband sneak attacked me. <laughs> like it, people were fucking going crazy with this oh. shit. Like imagine your pregnancy reveal is a meme. <laughs> Which like someone needs to fucking sneak attack me so I can get off the internet and stop reading about this man, Bao. So, um, Bao doesn't stop there. For the entire half of 2020, the only thing he stopped doing was taking his meds. Okay, he's off his bonkers. He's sneak attacking, left jabbing all of China. Like, he's talking nonstop, like 48.5 times per hour he's on the internet. Like, someone needs to take away his phone. I don't even know how he has a Wi-Fi router at this point. I'm being serious. At the height of his career, there was like 48.5 memes about him every single hour on Billy Billy. Like, people were upset with him obsessed there were 19,000 videos uploaded in the span of like one day and reposted <laughs> by netizens and they're all memeing bow in some way and he just kept on providing fresh material there was one video where he ties a pepsi bottle like you know those leader bottles that are really uh -huh. plasticky he ties it to a pole and he's just gonna break through the plastic by punching it and like please the pepsi bottle genuinely needs to be saved it's being held hostage like look at the pepsi bottle and then after several punches he looks the camera dead in the eyes he looks us dead in the eyes and says i can't break it <laughs> 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 so then oh. instead of Pepsi bottles, he switches to violating watermelons. Oh. He ties up a watermelon to the side of the pole and he starts smacking it and he's like, hoo, poo, hoo, poo, jump, punch, jump, punch. And then he can't break it? He did successfully vandalize the watermelon and oh. like, 
Yeah, he said, uh, if you want to do this at home, you got to be really fast about it. And in the middle of the filming, you just see that there is a poor woman walking in the background uh-huh. witnessing this massacre of these watermelons. <laughs> Girls, keep your melons safe. This is the face of a man who is not around okay then there was another video of him quote tai chi through a bamboo forest i don't even know what to say about it okay i don't even know what to say about that one and uh he's doing his power move which is the lightning five connected whips that's the one yeah, yeah which that's oh that's the 11 punches yeah. yeah netizen said it looked less like martial arts and more like a grandpa having a fit about missing his evening oatmeal <laughs> Yeah, someone even commented, I think everyone misunderstood Master Ma. What he's performing is being struck by lightning. (laughs) That's why it's called Lightning Five Connected Whips. Which he's kind of just like slapping things around. (laughs) And as for his second power move, it's the monkey neck shrinking move. And Edison said it just looks like he's shrugging his shoulders. (laughs) They're like, don't be flexing on us now with those very mobile shoulders, old man. (laughs) Yeah, he even does a TV interview. And obviously it's a whole mess. The reporter thinks he's like the butt of the joke. And like midway through, he just like gets up and does his lightning whips. (laughs) And nobody asked for it. I, I, the reporter is too stunned to speak. It's a lot. Yeah. And then he's like, well, everyone will be scared when they find out that I can execute this five consecutive whip and they can't and they'll realize the profoundness of Chinese martial arts. <laughs> he's saying, I can do it, but you can't. And you should be very, very scared. And then he basically asked the reporter, fight me. Oh, fight yeah, me yeah. right now. Fight me. Um, Bro, Grandpa's losing his mind. Yeah, so the CCP banned him. <laughs> <laughs> they banned him from the internet. <laughs> All of his uh, memes and videos uh, were um, wiped from Chinese social media. And you would think that's the end. <laughs> but no, he came back in 2022, <laughs> completely rebranded. And say what you will, but this man is a marketing genius. He is now live streaming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's selling, right? He's selling on live streaming, <laughs> selling items. <laughs> he's just a live streamer doing like those commercials, like QVC commercials. And like, honestly, you got to give it to him. For a man in his 70s, he's got stamina. He films for over like five hours a day. And he's not just like kicking his feet up and chatting. He's putting his whole wussy into these performances. He's doing the improvised, improved version of the five connected whips. And he's selling Kleenexes. He's also really into performing. But it said that the hardest part about filming these live streams are his staff members. It's very hard for them to keep a straight face in the back. <laughs> you will see. They will struggle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he makes a lot of money. I think he made like $60,000 in one live stream. Same, and he Grandpa. donated. Yeah. And he donated half of it. Aww. And when he donated it, he wanted to provide proof that he donated it. <laughs> So he showed people, as, he showed everyone his bank account <laughs> where you could also clearly see his password. But you know what? You live and you <laughs> learn. <laughs> what? You live and you learn. <laughs> you live and- what the fuck? Okay, what happened? Nothing. He just changed his password and oh. he never did that again. Yeah. Oh my God. But um, yeah, that's... um. That's what happens when grandpa doesn't have a grandma and the nursing homes don't want him. (laughs) Grandpa's Uh, gone wild. He did also had a surgery. His ball was removed. Which one? The ball in the hand. Oh. In the hand. So yeah, that's pretty much um, Bao's story so far. Say what you will. I feel like he's got a crazier life than most of us. Like he's got a fun ass life, you mm-hmm. know? And I don't think that... I don't know. I feel like he might fight someone next year. Like nothing is... Nothing is off grounds for this man, but he's a really famous doinger now. He's got almost 2 million followers, which Dang. is crazy. Yeah, he posts fitness videos every day. <laughs> um, the internet is still memeing him, but everybody kind of loves him. Yeah. Yeah, he's so funny. Chinese netizen said that he does have poor kung fu skills, but his heart is in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, mm-hmm. people actually you know how you can make mods for league of legends do you make mods that you download on league okay. of legends and then you can like play new characters that league of legends has not released ah. he's uh one of the modded characters ah. and one of his moves is the left lightning connected whips <laughs> so uh that's it <laughs> what do you guys think would you let your grandpa become a national kung fu meme legend or are you pro seeing home for your grandparents let me know in the comments <laughs> and i hope you guys enjoyed check out hellofresh link to the description and i'll see you guys in the next one bye